So I'll ask you actually the same thing that I asked Gerard, which is what do you think it is about DC historically that's, that's made it survive for 75 years? Wow. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I think anytime you're in the business of, of uh, telling stories about iconic characters, there, there's two dangers. One, that, that the characters become ossified and become so branded that you don't, you're don't you scared to change anything about the, the, the characters, whether it's their costume, their storylines. <laughs> uh, Why would you mention the costume? I don't know. But you, you can't have fear about that. So, because that's, that's the danger, is that if you don't change things up every now and then, it just becomes branded and dated, and uh, it becomes more like the pulp heroes uh, preceded DC Comics, and the characters don't grow and stay current and, you know, with the times. The, the other danger is that you change them so much that they lose value and people don't know what they're associated with, you know, and, and you know, it's the fine line between the two you have to really ride, and, and uh, I think DC Comics has, uh, through its, you know, through, through the time and the people leading the company has um, really done that very well in that um, the characters haven't become so marketed and branded that they are... Um, unchangeable, you know, and, and so you look at even a character like Superman, I mean, they're continually doing new things with the character, updating his origin, uh, his hair, you know, he had a mullet at one point, which was really <laughs> popular and amazing, and, you know, so I think there's this, uh, yeah, and then Wonder Woman, even taking an iconic character like that and not being afraid to go and, and put a jacket on her, and apparently that, that creates all sorts of internet <laughs> panic. The world. Yeah, it yeah. really is like the end of the, uh, the fashion world, but uh, it's, it's, it's great to, um, to see that kind of fearlessness and you know, I, I think that's what's kept it vital and fresh and, and healthy. You know, you're famously known as one of the nicest guys around. Seriously. Oh, really? It, that's, wow, what, that's, yeah, great. that's what I'm <laughs> uh, But how do you take? I mean, the, the after the Wonder Woman thing went down, that was a. There's a lot of mean things thrown out there. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I, I was accused of raping the character, but someone someone sent me a, a tweet. Wow, uh, that'd be nice of them. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna, you, know, hey, you know, here's the thing. It's, uh, I'm, I'm a veteran of the industry. I've been doing this since 87. So I think if it was like the first thing I did, it would probably that made me go to my room and cry, and, you know, for hours. And, and, you know, uh, I knew going into it that I was walking to a hail of bullets. There's nothing you can do uh, changing an iconic look that, that is going to be uh, universally uh, applauded, lauded, whatever. And uh, so I knew that there was going to be that negativity. I mean, it's the Internet, first of all. But second of all, it is an iconic character. That said, I think everyone that really, if you really think about it, you know, it's, it's like when you read these storylines, Superman dies in this issue. It's... It's like, yes, you want to buy into that storyline and feel that, but at the same time, you know he's coming back, okay? And so, you know, there, you look at a character like Batman, he's got all these different incarnations and different costumes, and, you know, it's really just sort of expanding what Wonder Woman is and giving her a variety of looks and, and, and broadening out what that character represents. And actually, when I was drawing the character in, um, you know, All-Star Batman and Robin and... Uh, the Superman run I did. I, I, I kept. I changed her costume every time I drew it. Just again, just to kind of mess with it, and, and just realize, like, look, she shouldn't have just one universal look. I think there's a, a lot of ways you can play her. You can play, her, play her as this Amazonian warrior. Uh, you can play her as this sort of uh, diplomatic herald. Uh, I mean, you can play her as a straight superhero. So there's all these different kind of things. So. Um, yeah, so as far as how it affects me, you know, here's the thing. It's like, I, I, there's a lot of positive stuff that's said about anybody online. So you, you can, if you buy into that, you got to believe all the negative negativity. So to me, I kind of like um, discount the people that say, like, oh, you're the second guy, whatever. And, and, and that allows me to discount the, the people that say you're awful and you, you don't know how to design with crap. So I, I get the middle of the road guys that say, uh, you know... This stuff is it's better than it was before or I liked it when I was a kid whatever I mean you know there you are you are, you're many things to different people and so I'm perfectly content with the idea that uh, there what I do is not everyone's cup of tea and at the end of the day it's like you know all you can do is try to do your best stuff and um, you know I know that there's still a lot of supporters and fans and uh, if anything I just regret not being able to draw the character because I think part of part of selling a costume is showing it in action you know and uh, if, you know, I was limited to really one drawing of it, so it'd be great to kind of um, show the character in motion and how heroic she can look in that outfit um, and how cool she can look in that outfit. And uh, uh, you know, Don Kramer's doing a great job with it, but I would have loved to have you know kind of joined in that fight to, to kind of win that um, 
PR battle, I guess. <laughs> uh, um, just touching on something you brought up there about the fact that you know these radical changes happen, but we all know they're temporary. Uh, but at the same time, that turns some people off the idea of, oh, well, why should I care that Superman's dead if I know he's going to be back in five issues? Well, I, I think that's the nature of any fiction, I mean, any movie you go to, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, the, the main hero will be put in danger but will not die. But you, you, you can't let that, knowing that, if you, if you bind to that too deeply, you can't enjoy the danger that the character's going through. So that's what I'm talking about. It's that, that you have to kind of suspend your, your disbelief and get into the moment. But at the same time, you have to realize that, you know, um, this is... We're not saying that other costume doesn't exist or it's going away. It's, right. We're saying for this time, this is what she's going to look like. And, you know, if you look throughout the history of any of these characters, all their costumes have evolved and changed. And she even had, like, a white, all-white all costume in the 70s, <laughs> right. which I kind of like, you know. Uh, you know, all I know is that we had a lot of uh, designs that we did that were much more similar to her original ones, that were more sort of minor adjustments here and there. And JMS, and I think correctly so, you know, instinctively said, look, this is not the way to go. We've got to do something that's 180 degrees away from what we started. We have to do something that is dramatically different. Otherwise, no one's going to give a crap. And, right. and, and he's right, you know. And and not to say that we purposely went to annoy people, but we <laughs> wanted to do a, a look that did not resemble her original costume and really downplay a lot of the the parts that kind of shouted out, like, I'm a superhero, look at me. You know, like, she could not walk down the street in her old costume with any sense of... Um, blending into a crowd. She right. could a little now, you know, so that, I think that was the goal that he wanted. Well, I, I wasn't tra talking so much about the costume, this costume's change. Right. Um, I was trying to say more the fact that in a single film or a novel or even a short novel series, right. because it is a self-contained story, you know, will have an sure. end, you know, there is more ability to make a dramatic change at the end. Right. Because, you know, at the end of my at the end of some author's five book series, if the sure, character sure. dies, it's done. Right. These characters they're a brand. You know, there's only, you know, like you said, right. the change will be undone because you you're not we're not going to stop publishing Superman now because we killed him. Well, I, I would say uh, yes and no. Okay. Uh, I'll use uh, uh, Robin as an example. Dick Grayson graduate from being Robin to Nightwing, and that's a permanent change. He's never going to go back to being this kid. So he was like, uh, he was um, put through uh, adolescence, made into a young adult, and then stopped, right? So you, you have seen some of these changes. Um, and I think uh, there's a lot of stories in the DC Universe where we have gone forward and shown like the last days of Superman or the last days of Batman. Um, uh, you know, Neil Gaiman just did one recently, and Alan Moore did whatever happened, you know. Um, to Superman and, and uh, you look at a storyline like Dark Knight Returns to me that's like the last Batman story and in my mind it's still the last Batman story so uh, it's amazing uh, when you apply creativity to that there's a lot of ways to get around that notion and, okay. and I think uh, the best works of fiction uh, in, in comics um, completely get you involved to the point where you believe oh no he might actually die or oh no this is actual real change and, and those are the best stories okay.